for the damage. Wow. 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 When what you do is the reason for the damage. I'm going to say it one more time. When what you do is the reason for the damage. Thank you, Jesus. Let me start here tonight and let's discuss this so we can be clear and understand a couple of things here. Amen. And that is why some of you are experiencing what you are. Preach, man. My God. There is a big difference between damage and destruction. Okay. 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 There's a big difference between damage mm -hmm. And destruction. Mm -hmm. Got to you. That which is damaged, watch this, has the ability to be saved and yeah. used again. Yeah. yeah. That which has been destroyed ah. indicates no desire mm -hmm. to use it ever again. Preach, man. God has, for some of you, watch this, been allowing some things around you to be damaged. Mm -hmm. yeah. Come on. Ah. I'm going to say it again. For some of you in here, this message might not be for everybody, but it's for those that will get it. For some of you sitting here tonight, God has been allowing some stuff around you to be damaged. But it has not been destroyed. Because what he is saying is, I have every intention to use you again. Oh! Oh! When this is all over, some of you better hear me tonight. God is saying, I will not allow this things around you. Watch this to destroy you. But I will let some stuff come on, man. Be damaged. Because I got a plan for you. This is for five believers that feel like ain't nothing been working. I came on an assignment tonight to tell you that God has a plan for your life. But this is what you have to understand. What you have been going through is the season for damage. You are going to have to experience damage, damage Come on, man. around you. My God. Let me help you tonight. This is not happening to you because you did something wrong. Come on. Come on. Now, if it was a simple fact that you did something wrong, God would not have damaged it. He would have destroyed it. Go ahead, man. Right. Preach. Okay. So. Whenever there is something that God has no intentions on using again, he destroys it. That's why the yoke, okay, the anointing what destroys, okay, the yoke because it has no intentions on it ever being utilized again. But something that has been damaged, I wish for that God will help me get through here tonight. Something that has been damaged, you must understand that what God is saying, I have every intent on using it again. And some of you are asking yourself, why are you going through what you've been yes, going through? Why are you dealing with what you've been dealing with? I come to tell you tonight, it's not that you've done something wrong. It's because you've been doing everything right. Oh God, I hear you here. And so because you've been doing everything right, you find yourself going through this season. God is going to use you. Slap your name. I told you you're going to need him before the night. Yeah. Uh -huh. Tell him, man of God yeah. is going to use you. Again, some of y'all have been trying to figure out why is this happening to me. I've been trying to do everything right. I come to church. But people that don't seem to come to church seem to be doing pretty well. Say that. Yeah. I pay my time. Yeah. And those that don't pay their tithes I pay mine. seem to be doing all right. Yeah. Look like they're living okay. Uh-huh. The I, 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 I'm 
keeping the faith. Preach, man. Yeah. But it looks like those that are always whining and complaining yeah. seem to always come into what they consider yeah. to be faith. Yeah. Yeah. Is there anybody in here that says, Pastor Neil, I have been experiencing some damage? I'll tell you why it's because of what you are doing. You've been doing the right thing. Look at somebody and say, God ain't mad at you. God ain't mad at you. He's getting ready to move for you. Don't you yell at me like that. I'm trying to build my case before I go off. Look at somebody and say, God ain't mad at you. He's getting ready to move for you. Come here! Job, if Job wants to help me minister here tonight, he will help me by saying, Pastor Neil, I understand what it's like to go through what you're talking about. Job finds himself stuck in the middle of a conversation between the devil and God. God says to him, what cometh thou, Satan? He says, from going to and fro, in the earth, walking up and down, in his seeking, whom I may devour. God says, have you considered my servant Job? For there is none like him in all the earth a perfect and upright man one that feared God and excluded evil. Why? Notice when God begins to talk about first, he begins to talk about all the stuff he did right. I don't have no talk back church. He's one that feared God and excluded evil. Uh -huh. He's walking upright. He talks about all the stuff that he does right. So the devil turns around and said, does not he serve you for none? If you remove the heads from around him, he will curse you to your face and die. The Lord says to Satan, you can have everything he got, but don't touch his life. I'll leave that one there till I get to the end of my message. Because I came to tell somebody you ain't going nowhere until you get everything God promised you. I wish I had a talk back church in here. Tell him cancel the funeral back. I decided to live. I ain't going nowhere until I get everything gone. Should I preach in here tonight? God, you allow me just to talk a few minutes. And so now the devil leaves from here. He gets his oxen. He gets his sheep. He gets his camel. He strips a lot of everything that he has. What is happening now? Damage is happening all around Job. It seems like Job cannot escape misfortune from happening. He gets to a point where the Bible says he rent his manner. He shaved his head. He falls down on the ground and begin to worship. I came to tell somebody just because you worship don't mean it ain't gonna get worse. Yeah, uh, you thought because you came to church and worship tonight it's gonna get better. I came to tell you y'all don't want this word that before it get better it's gonna get a little worse. But they that wait on the Lord he shall renew their strength they shall not up with wings that should run and not be weary they will walk. Get to the place now where everything has been damaged. Yeah. And this is where some of y'all need to understand where my praises will go up and help me tonight. That God says even though you find yourself in the situation where stuff is being damaged, watch this, I'm going to still allow you to produce. Hey, I don't have a talk back church. You got to understand. Tell your neighbor. Tell your neighbor. He has every intent to He's use you intent. again. Okay, y'all missing this. I know some stuff been messed up. But tell him he has every intent to use you again. Job. Job wife says to him, why don't you curse God and die? Job turns around and says, you speak as one of the foolish women speaketh. Shall not we receive good? At the hand of the Lord as well as evil. I came by to tell y'all that if you never get to the place where your leader, y'all not helping me up in here, when your leader will rebuke you, it's an indication he don't need you. Okay, and then hear what I say. For all of y'all that's running for rebuke, it's an indication we don't need you. For everybody that we rebuke, it's an indication we need you to rebuild. And everybody that don't want to rebuke, it's an indication we don't need you. The reason why. All right, let me, let me get out of here. Because I'm trying to work my case, but y'all pushing me. Be very careful of the people you can't rebuke. 
Because the people that don't want rebuke is the people God telling you you don't need. Because everything that you can rebuke is an indication you're willing to be rebuilt. And that's why God never took Job's wife. Because Job's wife was willing to be rebuked. Because somewhere in here, I'm going to need you again. I wish I had somebody up in here that would look at your name and say, Name, somewhere in here, I'm going to need you again. careful of people you can't rebuke. Because people you can't rebuke are people that are indication they're not a part of your rebuild. The problem, the reason why some of us can't rebuild is because we're too busy holding on to asses. And you ain't gonna get nowhere with asses. You need sheep. God, I hear him up in here. You need some folk that will follow you even when they don't know where you're going. Y'all want me to preach in here tonight? Job experiences damage because of what? But he was not experiencing destruction. The reason why he was not experiencing destruction is because God has every intent to use him again. Okay? The reason why his wife is not taken in the massacre of everything that's being lost is because God has intent to use her again. When you look down, and I'm hastening here because I got to go. When you look down in verse or chapter 42, when Job now is being celebrated, look at somebody and tell them, neighbor, neighbor. don't you dare close the book if you haven't completed all the chapters. I don't know who this is for, but I know who it's for. Some people going to have to take the book of life back off the shelf about you. Because they close it and put it back because they're doing the good read. Oh God, I hear you. Because it wasn't going the way they thought it should go. They closed it and put it back. But I came to tell you, baby, this story ain't over. Look at somebody and say, if this story ain't over. So he gets to, I got to hasten here. He gets to the 42nd chapter of his life. And when he gets to the 42nd chapter of his life, he talks about how he got double. Yeah. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. He gets double, but then they talk about the reproduction uh -huh. of his children. Uh -huh. I have oh to believe you might not find it in the text, but I'm just going over the limb. There is no woman, I feel you here, God. Let me move to my other points. There is no woman that will participate in the reproduction of your children, but won't participate in the reproduction of your planning. Uh -huh. If you got a woman that only wants your kids but don't want you to have a great future, you ain't got a woman, you got a hoochie. Y'all not helping me here. Okay, y'all can get mad at me if you want. If you got a woman that only want to lay down and I don't see nothing wrong with a little bump and grind, some way you got to get up and help me start it all over again. Women speak. 
speaking. Yeah. Wow. He rebuked her. Yeah. 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 But he used her. Okay. 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 All right. Look at somebody and say, neighbor, I'm in my season to reproduce. I don't know who I'm talking to, but I dare you think about the greatest season you ever had in your life. And then praise God because he's going to give you that season back again. <laughs> it's going to be greater this time. It's going to be better this time. It's going to be more. Here in Acts, Paul and Silas mm. is on their way to pray. Preach, man. When they are met by a certain damsel uh, who is possessed uh -oh. with the spirit of divination. Told you it was a witch. She brought her master, watch this, much money by fortune. Come on, man. Preach it. And she is following Paul and Silas for many days uh -huh. while they are on their way to pray, uh -huh. crying out, these men are the servants Jesus. of the Most High God, which shows us the way of salvation. Let me help y'all tonight, if y'all don't mind. Prayer, Prayer. will always, Prayer. watch this, God calls God to send an answer. Yeah. Oh my God. But it will also provoke the devil to send an attack. Yeah. Okay, all right. Okay, all right. I'm going to say it again because y'all didn't catch it. I said prayer will always provoke God to send an answer. But it will always cause the devil to send an attack. How you think you're going to pray and don't have hell in your life? How you... That's why we can get more people to come to a musical and ain't nobody showing up to a prayer meeting. Because the devil don't care that you're dancing at a musical. But what he don't want you to do is get on your knees. That's why the old church used to say, down on my knees. When trouble arrives, I'll talk to Jesus beyond the sky. He promised me here. Hear my plea if I tell him, down on my knees. Look at somebody on your row and say, neighbor, prayer will always cause God to send an answer. But it will cause the devil to send an attack. How do I know? Because Paul and Silas, let me hasten here because y'all don't want me to work. Paul and Silas is on their way to prayer when they are now interrupted by a woman that has a spirit of divination. And now they are trying to get into the house of God so they can continue to pray when now she is heckling them, causing them to be disturbed and bothered. Is there anybody in here know what it's like to be doing the right thing? When I would do good, evil is always present. You're doing the right thing, but it seems like all hell is breaking loose. You're doing the right thing, but it seems like you can't get ahead. I came to tell you it's all right now. God is getting ready to come through for you. I prophesied tonight to about 10 people that will grab this and go crazy. I need you to understand that the devil can't stop your assignment. Whatever God has called you to do, the devil can't stop your assignment. Why don't you look down your rope and slap your neighbor fire and say, neighbor, the devil can't stop your assignment. And what God asks for me, oh God, I feel like preaching. It is for me. I wish you would lean on your neighbor and say, neighbor, the old church used to say, throw me overboard. I got a hiding place. This old building, keep on leaning. But look at somebody and say, neighbor, the devil can't stop my assignment. And for everybody to know that God is getting ready to come through for you. Why don't you clap your hands and start praising him? Say he can't stop your assignment. He's seen that I'm almost dead. 
God says, he says now, they're going to pray. I'm almost dead. He's going to pray. And they find themselves being there, being heckled now by this woman that has a spirit of divination. I don't know who it's for, but James 5, 16 says, the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. Just keep on praying. The Lord is mine. Just keep on praying. He will hear your cry. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, he can't stop your assignment. I don't care how much hell you're going through. He can't stop your assignment. I don't care how rough it is. He see After many days, Paul and Silas, they are green and they command in the name of Jesus. Please remember that. Before we get out of here, preacher, we're going to call on Jesus. But if you call on Jesus, y'all don't know that. He will, he will answer prayer. I'm sorry, prophet, but I feel like preaching tonight. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, before we out of here, we want to use the name of Jesus. Let me hasten now. He speaks to the spirit and he says, come out. Tell your neighbor, remember the name of Jesus. We gonna need it again before the night is over. And the Bible says that that same hour, the spirit came out of that woman. I feel like preaching tonight. Second Chronicles 714 declares, if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray, see my face and turn from their wicked ways, then what I hear from heaven, I'll forgive the sin and heal the lame, slap your neighbor and say neighbor, you're going to need, y'all ain't going to like this one, Shiv, but you're going to need somebody to speak to that spirit, that spirit that's in you, you're going to need somebody to speak to it, that's why the church is messed up, because won't nobody speak to your spirit, you come to church with the same spirit, week after week, but stop your neighbor,
humble themselves and pray. Uh -huh. Seek my face. Where were they going to the house of prayer? Yeah. Yeah. They have been doing this for days. Uh -huh. Oh God. Uh -huh. And then what I hear from heaven, I'll forgive the sin uh -huh. and I will heal the land. Uh -huh. For some of y'all, God say tonight, uh, if you let us speak to that spirit, uh, he'll heal and forgive you. Uh -huh. That's why some of y'all uh, got seducing spirits uh, and you keep connected uh, with the same spirit like yours. Uh, Cause ain't nobody spoke to it. Uh, but I came to tell Ryan, uh, you got to leave tonight. Uh, I came to tell fornication. Uh, okay, I'm getting in trouble now. Uh, you got to leave tonight. I came to tell adultery. You got to leave tonight. Somebody got to speak to their spirit. Let's be in this. Come out. All our sexuality. No one get mad at me. Come out. Lying. Come out. Backbiting. Come out. Stop your leader, father. And say, neighbor, let me speak to that spirit. This woman, listen to this, and I'm done. This woman was not destroyed. She was just damaged. How do I know? Because those that benefited from her could no longer use her. I came to tell everybody that's ready for the next level that the reason why some people are falling off is because God says, I'm getting rid of the spirit of usury. Yes, God. You're trying to hold people to you that's been using you for years. Don't you run around this church like that. You will make me nervous. And God says, yes, some folk gonna turn on you because you spoke to that spirit and they can't use you no more. Yes, some folk gonna walk out on you because you spoke to that spirit. So some of y'all are still broken and still bound because you don't want nobody to speak to that spirit. Why don't you talk to your neighbor and say, neighbor, that got to go. It's time for us to call it out. God wants to forgive you. God, I wish I had somebody that would be honest. God wants to forgive you. Yes, God. And God wants to heal you. Let me close here. Brings me to this first observation. And that is, tell your neighbor, I'm getting ready to ride, fellas. I'm going to get out of your church, prophet. I'm sorry, man. I'm going to go in a minute. I'm going to ride. I'll let you know. I'm going to ride in a minute. But it brings me to my first observation. And that is, look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, in this next season, you're going to take a beating, but it won't break you. God, I hear you. You're going to take a beating, but it won't break you. They going to lie on you. Help me preach, Isaac, but it won't break you. They going to talk about you, but it won't break you. They going to ridicule you, but it won't break you. They going to leave you, but it won't break you. Bible says that the multitude rose up together against them and began to beat them out of their clothes. And when they had laid many stripes upon them, I got away from my praises. And that word is Lisa. You may take a beating, but you won't bleed out. Tell your neighbor, this ain't going to kill me. Because what that devil meant for evil, God going to turn it around for my good. I wish I had about five of y'all that leap on your feet and turn around and tell the devil, I may take a beating, but it ain't going to break me. I'm not going to bleed out. I see Jesus. Help me, Jesus. Help me, Lord. I see Jesus. He come now to save us. And just like me, they whipped him all night long to the flesh from his bone. Put him on a bow or rugged cross. And they nailed his hands. And they nailed his feet. They put a cloud. I feel like preaching. A 
clothes upon his head and they gambled over his clothes, spit in his face. He asked for drink. Some of y'all better know I'm talking to you. He asked for drink, but they gave him vinegar. He hung there on the cross. He said, Eli, Eli, lay my so back a night, my God, my God, which in translation means why. And thou forsaken me. Notice the book and wrote the text. The Bible says he dropped his head in the locks of his shoulders and he gave up the ghost. I got a word for y'all. He didn't bleed out. He gave it up. And some stuff, you ain't take none for me. I gave it up. Some stuff, you ain't walk out on me. I let you go. Y'all And say, neighbor, you gon' take a beating, but I prophesy, you will not bleed out. I'm done. Look at somebody and say, neighbor, they didn't take nothing for me. I let it go. You didn't take no position for me. I let it go. Y'all not saying nothing. You didn't take no job for me. Baby, I let it go, cause he removes the front. Go find your neighbor and say, neighbor, you won't take a beating, but you're not gonna bleed. Yes, God. God is preserving you. God is saving you for what he got next. Why don't you lean on your neighbor and say, neighbor, you sitting next to the next thing God's about to use. You're sitting next to the next thing God's about to bless. You are sitting next to the next thing God's about to deliver. I'm sitting next to the next thing. God's about to free. They didn't take nothing from me. I gave it up. Why? Because I had every intent to use it again. Because on the third day. And say, man, you're going to take a beating, but it won't break you. When they look up, you're still going to be blessed. When they look up, you're still going to be anointed. When they look up, you're still going to be powerful. For greater is he. I feel like preaching that is in me. For he. Over your life, that you will not bleed out. This is only for y'all that's ready to praise God. I came to tell you, First Lady, this is not going to kill you, but it's going to kindle the fire in you. Fire, fire, fire. Fire, fall on me. Look at your neighbor and sing, neighbor. This ain't going to kill you. But what it will do, it's going to kindle a fire in you. It's going to make you better than you've ever been. When you come back from this, eyes have not seen, no it. Look at your name and say, when I come back from this, when I come back from this, Him 
shall not perish. And I will say unto the Lord, He is my refuge. A present help. I preach to myself in the time of trouble. For in the time of trouble, The inner 
prison. <laughs> and they put their feet <laughs> fast <laughs> in the stars. <laughs> but look at your neighbor <laughs> and say, neighbor, <laughs> if you ever <laughs> connect <laughs> with the right person, <laughs> you coming out <laughs> right on time. <laughs> I came to tell somebody, <laughs> God's getting ready <laughs> to put you on schedule because <laughs> you didn't connect it <laughs> with the right fool. <laughs> I'm done with y'all. I told y'all he won't be up three years more. Say your neighbor. Say neighbor. Say hey neighbor. Hey neighbor. Hey neighbor. You be ready to come out because you're connected to the right people.
looking so pretty and cute, so handsome and debonair. Let an earthquake hit me. Oh, look at your name and say, hey, name. An earthquake is spiritual. About to hit your life. And everything is getting ready to be shaken up. And it shook the foundation where they were sitting. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, everything on my road is getting ready to be delivered. Yes, the prison suffered damage, but it suffered damage because of what they did. I came to tell you, yes, you will cry. But you pray for this, yes, you will suffer, but you dance for this, for if you endure hardness as a good soldier, and go I reckon that the suffering of this present time cannot be compared to the glory, all the glory, all the glory, all the glory. Jesus, 
triple at the name of Jesus. For at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, every tongue must confess. Come here, you Jamaican woman who was on an aircraft. Help me, God. That was getting ready to take off. But something in her spirit said it just ain't right. I went to a meeting one night and my heart was right. Stop it. Jamaican woman started calling Jesus, 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 Jesus. Back in the day when I got saved, they put you on your knees as they call Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus.
the report came in, they said the pilot said, when we got ready to go down the runway, I noticed one of the engines, one of the engines was acting up. And when I put a call in to ground control, I came to tell y'all, tonight, y'all are ground control. And if we put a call into heaven, we got the answer. God, I hear you. When they put a call in the ground control, ground control says, we see smoke and sparks coming from your engine. The pilot, the pilot, the pilot, the pilot, the pilot, the pilot, the pilot says, if we would have got
apologize to nobody you disturbed them. So the prisoners didn't understand what they were doing. We don't expect you to understand why we dancing like this. Because it's an indication you a prisoner. So all the prisoners see it. Who you said this was a party? Who you said this was? represent the Holy Ghost. Yeah. And on the day of Pentecost, yeah. prophet, I don't expect everybody to understand this praise. You want to know why? Because it's an indication you're a prisoner. There's something in you that still got you bound. So because it's something in you that still got you bound, you can't move. But I promise you, when the night is over, you're going to appreciate this move. Yeah. Because for some of y'all, you're going to be laying in the bed when deliverance comes. Yeah. I got news last for you. Everything connected to me in this season is a pleasure. And if you ain't a pleasure, you can't be my friend.
helpful what you said before I got up. But what you said was a witch. And you don't know who the witch could be. Be very careful what you say. Because you never know who you could be talking about. Y'all still here or y'all left? Uh -huh. We're here. Be very careful what you say. Because you never know who the witch who the witch is. The damage came because of what they did. When they started to pray and sing praises unto God, that's when the earthquake came. It didn't come while they were just sitting there. It didn't come when they were doing nothing. It came when the prayer went up. The praise went out. And when the prayer went up and the praise went out, God sent the earthquake to rearrange some stuff so he could release them from the bondage they were in. Some of you tonight, be very careful. You missed the move of God because God is saying, I'm trying to release you from a bondage that can had you for years. God to use me again. I'm ready for him to use me again. Because this time, watch this, the oil is going to be different. Watch yourself. My God. Mother, this is the amazing part about this scripture that blows my mind. My God. When the jailer came to himself and saw that the chains were loose. Notice what the Bible said, and thought they had fleed. Yes. So it lets me know that the prison doors had to have been opened. Yes. That's right. That's right. For him to think that they had left. Yes. He drew a knife, mm. his sword, and was getting ready to kill himself. Yes, Lord. This is what's going to be so powerful about the next anointing on your life. The next anointing that God is getting ready to put on your life, you're going to use it to save your enemies. Mm. Hallelujah. That's why some of y'all are not ready for this move tonight. Yeah. 
Because the next oil that be poured on your life, you will have to use it to save the people that talked about you. Come on, sir. Come on, sir. You're going to have to use it to save the people that dogs you out. My God. That's good. Help me, Jesus. You're going to have to use it for the people that ridiculed you. Watch this. And put you in the place you were in. Mm. And Pastor left Neil. you for dead. Yes. That's My how you're going to know that the anointing on your life has shifted. Jesus. When you say to your enemies, do it yourself. No harm. Could not they have stood there and watched him yes. kill himself? Yes. But after a while, you put me here. Yeah. You did put me here. Yeah. So let me stand back and watch your demise. But he said, oh, do yourself no harm. Watch this. For we all are here. Here's the powerful part about this moment of God. This is the powerful part about it. The, part. Part about it. the prisoner keeper said to them, this is too much for me. Go, go. Y'all just leave. Yeah. These My bad boys said, oh no. Ha. We ain't going nowhere. Nah, right. Go get them that put us in here. Yeah. Come on now. Come on now. And have them <laughs> deliver us. Yeah, Jesus. You forgot what I said. I said it's like a puzzle. And when he got to the 42nd chapter of his life, they all came. Yes, they did. And brought him something. Yes, they did. Even the ones that talked about him. You better get ready in this season because God will send your enemies back. Okay, y'all didn't hear me. So they can bless you. Wow. That's why your oil got to be different. Wow. That's the deal. Because people that rely on you is going to come back and say, God told me to bless you. And what you can't be saying, they'll get out of my face. No, 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 no. You got to say, thank you, baby. Thank you. And guess what? And after you receive it, let them go. That's it. That's it. Tonight, tonight, somebody, watch this. Your family needs this. If you're in here and you say, Pastor Neil, I got some stuff that's been in bondage. My God. I got some stuff that look like ain't nothing happening. I came to tell you, God is getting ready to use you again. If you in this house and you say, I want the oil on my life to be different this time. Come quickly, come quickly, come, come. Rush this altar now, come quickly. I want the oil to be different. I want the oil to be different. I want the oil to be different. Some of you, listen, if you got some family members that's going through, if you got some family members that's going through, come tonight for your family. Come tonight for your daughter. Come tonight for your son. Some of you may have some financial struggles going on in your life. Come tonight, come tonight. Don't miss this moment. Don't miss this moment tonight. Don't miss this moment. We're going to provide the fire. Oh, God, I thank you. And he's going to provide. If you provide fire, I'll provide the sacrifice. Come on, I need you coming. Some of you have been sick in your body. Tonight is your deliverance. Your spirit. I will open up inside. I will open up. Fill me 